Welcome to Westmoreland Community Connections, a look at issues and happenings on Classic Hits 107.1 WHJB. Here now is your host, Jennifer Mealy, Chief Communications Officer and Managing Director of Evangelization of the Diocese of Greensburg. Welcome to Westmoreland Community Connections on WHJB. I'm your host, Jennifer Mealy. Today, we're talking with the organizers of the Westmoreland Fair that's coming up August 19th through the 27th this year at the Westmoreland Fairgrounds. With me today is Sarah Spawn. She's the fair secretary. And Leanna Landy, she's the entry office secretary. Ladies, are you getting excited for the fair? We are so excited. We are just a month away and we cannot wait you know, to welcome everybody back to the 2022 Westmoreland Fair. Wonderful. So let's talk first about your involvement in the fair. Sarah, where did you grow up? You know, did, were you, um, you know, encultured into uh, fairs and how did you end up with the job that you have now? So I actually did not uh, grow up on the fair side. I went to Hemfield High School and um, I just... I was a fair participant as in I came and I ate and enjoyed all the fair things, but I actually never entered anything into the fair, which I think is just so great. You can be involved in the fair yourself. And, um, but I, I never was, um, I was always, like I said, a, a participant as in an attendant, uh, standpoint. Um, but when I graduated college, I came back to the Greensburg area and the position was open and I, and I decided to take it. Um, after I interviewed, and it's been a it's a bit an amazing fit for me here um, with the fair. So it, it's a it's a good it's a good time here. What do you do? Tell tell everybody at home a little bit about your job with the fair. So I'm the fair secretary. So I'm kind of um, the the organizer. So I do work with our board of 21 directors. Um, we go to convention every year in January for the state. Um, that's where we find our entertainment acts, some of our vendors as far as like golf carts and radios. Um, and I organize all of that. So all the entertainment commercial side, such as like the vendors and the foodies, that's my side of the fair. Whereas Leanna, she, she's more entries. So, but I, I'm commercial side is what we say. Awesome. And I can't wait to hear about uh, some of those vendors and some of those acts that are coming in. We'll yes. do that shortly. So, Leanna, tell us a little bit about you. I, I grew up in the country. Uh, we did not grow up on a farm, but we were raised to have an appreciation for agriculture and the ecosystem and um, how to live off the land. We did have gardening. I we weren't involved with 4-H. However, when I was older, I actually did get involved with entering things when my children uh, were in 4-H for a little while. Um, that started the interest for myself. Um, one thing led to the other. And before I knew it, I was working in the entry office and my office, we coordinate with the extension office to update classes and we keep the exhibitor guide um, updated, which can be a daunting task. And um, we organize superintendents and try to keep all of the volunteers involved so that we couldn't do the fair without. Um, we have well over 130 volunteers just dealing with entries. So um, it takes a lot of people to pull it off. Oh my goodness. It sounds unbelievably complicated, but unbelievably successful because people like you two are involved with the Westmoreland Fair coming up on August 19th through the 27th. So Sarah, give us some of the highlights. Um, let's start with some of the acts. Do you mind talking about some of the acts? Yeah, so we do have a couple of our popular acts returning, such as the Agricadabra. It's a comedy animal show about agriculture. 
Um, and then our oh so famous Dr. Magical Balloons. He'll be strolling our grounds and making some cartoon characters for you with his balloons. And and then he'll he'll actually have a stage here as well that you can see him perform. One of our new acts this year is the Pork Chop Review. It's a it's a fun time. It's uh it's a big pig and he does some acts and some comedy there for you. So that's a that's something new for our fair. And then as always, we will have our camera rides and our petting zoo that's always a a, a good uh, attraction for us so it, it'll be fun with our uh entertainment this year it sounds really fun that sounds yeah. great and uh so let's talk about some food vendors why don't you tell yeah. us what you can expect this year so all things fair food means zero calories is what we say those nine days of the fair, you don't need to count your calories, but we have all the good stuff coming back. Your funnel cakes and fries and your Oreos and your, you know, your just famous hot dogs. And we have some barbecue vendors coming in and something great. We have the Westmoreland Family Farms food groups. They'll be returning. So it is your farm to table uh, food here. It comes straight from the, you know, the Westmoreland County Farms. So that's always a fun part of our fair. That sounds really great. Um, how about the big musical acts this year? Yeah, so we have quite a few big acts coming in um, to kick off the fair following our queen contest is the part-time cowboys. They'll be our first Friday, which is August 19th. Then that following day on Saturday, we have the Stampede Band um, sponsored uh, by Excella Health. And then on Tuesday, we have performer Joe Quick in the show arena. He'll be on at uh, 8.30. And then Wednesday we have Gary Pratt coming in. He's a he's a good country guy. And then fall uh, our last year we have Scott Shelby coming in the show arena. He's a a good local guy that is always a fun time to have. Yeah, that sounds great. So what can you tell us about uh, motocross, monster truck? Uh, yeah, so our grandstand events are always a hit. Uh, our first Friday, we will be having back the motocross. That was almost a sellout last year. It was such a good time. The weather was perfect. So we'll be having them back. It'll be the motocross show. And then that Saturday is our famous, famous monster truck show with the quad races. That is always a good time. Hopefully the weather turns out good for us this year. Um, and then we have our demo derbies. We'll have three demo derbies throughout the week of the fair. We'll have have our Raptor Z Rodeo, so you can see some cowboys and cowgirls showing off their moves. That's the Monday of our fair. And then, as always, we'll have our truck and tractor pulls. One thing exciting for this year, the Tuesday, which is August 23rd, we have something new coming. It is the quad and UTV pulls. So, just your standard uh, uh, quads and side-by-sides. They'll be coming to uh, take a whack at the the pull and sled. So that's something new and exciting this year. Yeah, that sounds amazing. So let's talk about entry fee to the fair and then to these different events. So how much does it cost just to get into the fair? So our general admission, uh, which includes parking, rides, and all admission to the commercial and agricultural exhibits, that is just $7. And we have not raised that price since 2002. So it is extremely affordable for families. And then we give you the option to pay an additional price for the grandstand events. The grandstand events are also very affordable. It can be anywhere from $5 for an adult to $7 for an adult, depending on which specific grandstand event you're coming to. So for less than $15, you can enjoy the entire fair for, you know, your family. So it, it's a very affordable price. Wow. That's fantastic. Um, so is it, you know, everything is, is family friendly. It is. It's a good time for the whole family to come on out. We are a, you know, an agricultural fair, and um, it, it it's it's just a good time to you know highlight the agriculture in our county. I mean, it is Pennsylvania's number one industry, and this is where we can show you know the work that all these you know farmers and kids put into their projects. Actually, for the families that show here, it is a end of summer celebration. And they get very involved with it and very excited. Oh, I'm sure they do. And let's talk about that for a minute. You know, from the very beginning on Friday, 
you're talking about showing horses, llamas, sheep. Can you talk a little bit about that? Uh, Yeah, throughout the entire nine days of the fair, there is something every single day as far as animal shows and um, showmanship. The kids all work real hard for that in every aspect. But we also have, it's not just for 4-H and FFA. We have a great number of uh, open class exhibitors who take part in our um, local agricultural celebration. And uh, we look forward to seeing, they, they all get very excited about all of it, really. it's it, You can't help but be, when you take part, to just be excited along with them. So, but yeah, we have a, lo- a lot of contests going on. And then, you know, there there are judges for each of the divisions. Why don't you talk about some of the more popular divisions that you see kids really getting okay. involved in? Okay, well, some of our most popular contests uh, that we've tried to make more fun have been some of the Pennsylvania State Association of County Fairs baking contests. Um, I mean, we're getting off the the track of the livestock, um, but there are a inside exhibits that people get involved with too that are agricultural. And and um, so, I mean, the chocolate cake contest that we had last year, we were informed that we had more entries here than any county fair across the state. Um, it, it has become a big thing. The chocolate cake contest um, awards $100 for the first prize, and that winner goes on to compete at the state fair in January. And the same story for the uh, Blue Ribbon Apple Pie contest. It's $100, and um, they go to the state as well in January to compete. There's also the Angel Food Cake and the Junior Cookie Brownie and Bar Contest. But one of our more recent popular contests um, that everybody gets involved with, um, and we actually had to move these to a different building because we had so many entries, is uh, the Scarecrow Contest. We have a best of show um, offered in that contest that is sponsored by uh, the Delmont 10 minute oil change, uh, which belongs to the Schindler family. Um, they sponsor a hundred dollars for that best of show. Um, and then we also do a people's choice for that same scarecrow competition. So we tried to double up the fun. Um, so there's a number of contests. We even have a thousand dollar, uh, winning contest for the senior supreme dairy champion and um that is awarded the last friday of the fair it's a it's one of the many things that everybody looks forward to everybody whether you're involved with the dairy you're interested in seeing who wins or watching the showmanship um it's it's a good time And what's so great about our fair is that open class too. So just because you didn't grow up 4-H or FFA doesn't mean you can't, you know, uh, still participate. So if you think you have the best chocolate cake or you think you can create the best of show scarecrow, you can participate. Uh, Absolutely. And you can even enter your homemade beer or homemade wine. Um, We have our local cider works company uh taddy bogle that's located in acne uh donating two fifty dollar best of show um gifts cards for the winners in the wine and the beer categories so it's it's one thing after the other here and it's all exciting you know, I have a serious question now. I have been volunteering at the <laughs> fair to MC the fair con- queen contest <laughs> for almost 20 years, and I have never once been asked to judge a chocolate cake contest. <laughs> oh, I am <laughs> launching a protest. I don't understand. No, I'm just kidding. That sounds absolutely amazing. And I'm learning so much just by talking to you guys. Um, we're almost at our halfway point before the break, but if someone is interested in finding out the fair schedule or how to enter some of these contests, 
or what acts are playing, where can they go to find this information? So all of our information is on our website, which is westmorelandfair.com. And our exhibitor guide is also on our website too. And you can do everything online. There is a small processing fee to do it online, um, but you can also do it here at the fair office as well. So you can uh, turn in all your entries in straight to the fair office, or you can do it online, which is again, westmorelandfair.com. You're listening to Westmoreland Community. Community Connections on WHJB. We're talking all about the Westmoreland Fair today with Sarah Spawn. She's the Fair Secretary and Leanna Landy. She is the Entry Office Secretary. Stay with us. We'll be right back. This is Westmoreland Community Connections on Classic Hits 107.1 WHJB. If you have a suggestion for a topic or if your nonprofit organization would like to be featured on this program, call us during regular business hours at 724-216-1200. Welcome back to Westmoreland Community Connections on WHJB. Having a wonderful time today talking with two of the organizers of the Westmoreland Fair. Sarah Spawn is the Fair Secretary. Leanna Landy is the Entry Office Secretary. Really exciting. Uh, The fair starts on Thursday, August 18th. That's when check-in happens. And then Friday is the public kickoff. So what happens on Friday, everybody? What, what, What can people expect? So Friday is just the kickoff of the fair. So at that point, most of our exhibits are in at that point. Um, And our gates do open at four o'clock that day. Rides and all the buildings will be open by five o'clock. So you can uh, stop by after work, you know, bring the whole family and just kick off the fair with us. So our very first event on Friday is our annual queen contest. It's always a good uh, place for young women to just promote the agriculture in our county. Um, And that's what these girls do. They uh, have a chance to be fair royalty. So the title for Westmoreland Fair Queen and Princess are up for grabs that day. And Jennifer, you have always done a fabulous job of emceeing. So you are very familiar with that contest. This year, actually, we moved it up an hour. Um, So it will be kicking off at six o'clock. And that way, that allowed us to bring in a band after that event. So the part-time Cowboys will hit the stage following the Queen contest at 8.30. Um, so it'll be just a fun time that Friday, that's that, that first Friday, which is August 19th. Wow. Yeah, that, that's always a great time. I really enjoy the Fair Queen contest because I see uh, these young women. And, and I, I look at 4-H, and although we... You know, we peripherally tried to get involved in 4-H. At home, we do more. Uh, You know how you said, uh, Leanna, about living off the land and growing things and taking care of animals and things like that. But what I see as the value of 4-H, of course, is the vocation. I mean, it's it's calling these young women women to a career in agriculture. And this Mm -hmm. winning or participating in this contest is an opportunity to, you know, get some scholarship money, but also you know, learn to really speak, talk, and engage about yes, that, that right. vocation uh, of agriculture. And so yes. you know, it might not be for every child and it might not be for every family, but certainly for the families that participate, this is a, a vocation. Yes. And, and that fair queen will then go on to the state competition in Hershey, Pennsylvania, every January, uh, we go to that convention and she'll have the opportunity to uh, get the title of the Pennsylvania uh, Fair Queen. So more opportunities for her after she gets that uh, Fair Queen title from us as well. Um, This is, you know, that's the fun of it. And then you see the queen and the princess sort of, you see them throughout the fair, right? I mean, their job isn't over once they get a crown on their head, right? Yeah, they have a full another eight days ahead of them making appearances, doing different radio interviews. Um, new stations will reach out for, you know, some from some information off of them. And then their duties uh, don't end just there. Um, they'll be a part of most of the showmanship contests and they'll be handing out ribbons and making different appearances like that. And then most of these women actually participate themselves. So they'll be throwing off the uh, crown and sash to put on their uh, jeans and flannel to potentially show themselves. So it's, it's a busy day for these women. 
Let's go all the way through the week to the very last day. That's Saturday, August 27th, (laughs) when we have everything from the archery contest, the livestock sale. That livestock sale is a really big deal for these young people, correct? It sure is. That's that there alone is a celebration. It's the finalization of all of their projects that they've worked so hard for. And uh, the whole community gets involved. A a lot of outsiders and businesses um, will show up and purchase animals and, um, and are very generous. So um, yeah, it's, it's a celebration within itself. And then also the, for the 4-H uh, benefit auction that we always do on Thursday nights, the share will also be um, auctioning off cheese baskets from products from our local dairies. So um, that's something new to look forward to. And we expect it to be a really popular um, auction item. Um, there's already a, a huge interest in it now. So. Oh my goodness. Cheese basket, count me in. And that's also WTAE day. So um, that reminds me that between Mr. Water Heater, WTAE, Armstrong Cable, WHJB, who they're hearing you on right now, uh, iHeart Media, Excella Health, Lowe's, EQT, Wish Radio Day. Um, what, what do the sponsors mean to this fair and could you do it without them? We could absolutely not do it without our sponsors. I mean, the sponsors are, you know, the heart of our fair. Um, We wouldn't be able to bring in the big acts and the events. Um, You know, we would, we would have to operate on a smaller scale and, you know, we're one of the biggest fairs around and, you know, in our area and without these sponsors, we just couldn't do it. So our working relationship with them is, is a vital part along with, you know, the many volunteers that we have, like Leanna mentioned, we have over 130 uh, superintendents and between them and the sponsors, you know, we might not see a, a Westmoreland fair, but we're, we're so grateful and thankful that we do have such a good relationship with these sponsors. It's, it's a good time. And all of our sponsors can be seen on our website, again, westmorelandfair.com under the sponsorship page. Um, so they are recognized, you know, for their efforts and their involvement in our fair. Oh yeah. I mean, also, one of them also, um, do you have vendor booths here at the fair? So always stop by and, uh, say thank you for their involvement. I mean, cause again, we, we just couldn't do it without them. Mm-hmm, definitely. So let's talk for a minute about COVID-19 and what happened to the fair during COVID. I mean, it was the, f- the first time in a long time that things had to go differently. Yeah. So so for the 2020 fair, it was unfortunately canceled due to COVID. Um, we, it was one of the most difficult decisions that some of our directors have ever had to make with the fair. Um, it was devastating for them because, again, this is their one opportunity to showcase what they've been working on. I mean, all their time and effort, um, they weren't able to, you know, show the public, you know, what they do. So it was a very, very hard decision. So we did not have a 2020. 20 Westmoreland Fair, but we came back last year for the 2021 season and it was very successful and we're expecting it to be, you know, equally the same. Um, but it, it did take a toll, you know, on our exhibitors and, and we had, we did see a decline in some of our numbers, but that we are working very hard to get those numbers back up and get everybody involved. I think we're in the clear. We, we do everything safe. Um, we follow all the guidelines that are required by the state. So I think people can feel comfortable coming out to our fair, feeling safe and healthy, you know, come out and enjoy the day. Leanna, uh, we were talking about the livestock sale and even the charity auction. Um, Livestock during COVID, I remember you telling me, you know, a lot of the kids just didn't do it because if they weren't going to make their money back, it was too large of an investment. And that goes back to the fact that these kids... The animals that these kids are working with in the market classes, they purchase these animals early in the year. Um, it's so with the uncertainties in the beginning of 2021, a lot of the 4-H 
kids did not get involved with project animals that they were unsure they would be able to finish that project with. So that is why the market animal numbers were down. Um, But we're looking to bring those numbers up this year. I have heard that they are um, slowly coming back up. And I know that our inside exhibit numbers were over the top last year. We did very well with inside exhibits. So... You're gonna yeah. you're gonna blow it out of the water this year. I can tell. Oh we yeah, took, we took yeah you. we took our our uh, our daughter to a couple of the 4-H meetings, and there were so many kids there. I couldn't mm-hmm. believe it. I said, I think 4-H is multiplying yeah. in Westmoreland County. I, so, I think you're doing a great job with all. I that. think on the bright side that you know the, all the disappointment did create a a revived interest in agriculture and. There are more families wanting to get involved. Maybe they can't afford to have a big farm um, and put all that work and time into it. But um, even the bits and pieces to have chickens, and I'm seeing a lot more chickens, and there are people getting goats left and right, um, and learning how to grow vegetables and um, how to process vegetables. So there is an interest in, um, I think on the bright side, that is what came out of COVID locally anyway. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, you know, great, great turnout. You know, I I always think you guys do such a good job with the marketing of the fair and people are able to, you know, look at your website. Your website looks fantastic. Westmorelandfair.com. You can download the brochure, um, I really like how you divide it into fun, farm, and food. I mean, that's really the <laughs> basics is that's what you need to know. Um, everything from the demolition derbies to a bottle rocket competition. Am I reading that right? Yeah, absolutely. That's a 4-H program. And yeah, we do that at the Grandstand Arena. And um, yeah, it's it's a big deal too, as as all of the contests are. Absolutely. And then there's the farm, um, enjoying the farm animals coming out. You can learn a lot about it. You can watch the cows being milked. You can pet the horses. Um, it's really uh, an amazing thing to see. And then of course the food, um, you know, that's Sarah's one of, I assume that's one of the big parts of your job is making sure there's something for everyone there, right? Yes. And we do, we have something for everyone from your standard Mexican to Italian to American food. I mean, we, we have it all here. And, and again, um, uh, fair food calories don't count. So come out and enjoy it guilt-free. That's great. Um, again, checking out the sponsors uh, that made this possible, the Supreme Grand Champion sponsors this year, uh, Armstrong, uh, Silvis, West Central Equipment. I see Artman Equipment in Murraysville, Cat, Peoples, and Ligonier Construction Company. Grand Champion sponsors this year, Excel Health, EQT, and WTAE uh, seems like you got a great group of sponsors this year and uh, any last minute messages for anyone who's still on the fence about coming out. What's your pitch? Well, we have well. nine days. It's a nine day event. So we believe it should work into your schedule. Um, we're open, um, you know, rain or shine. Uh, the only time we close is if there's any electrical storms in the area. Um, so even if you think it's raining at your place, it might not be raining here at the fairgrounds. And that's, what's so great about our location is we're kind of in the middle of a triangle. So between Greensburg, Lake Trobe and Mount Pleasant, um, our weather could be completely different here than where that you're is at. Very true. So always call, you know, to make sure that we are still open. Um, but it, it's a good time. And again, for just $7 per person, that includes everything except for your grandstand ticket. And, you know, we like to give you that option because a lot of people come to our fair just to, you know, have dinner or even lunch, you know, stop, you know, if you have an extra hour in between uh, your your work schedule. Um, So we give you that option, you know, to not have to pay to go into the grandstand. So if you're hungry, stop on out and get some fair food and uh, see the exhibits. I don't want to miss the opportunity to plug the championship horse pool that takes place the last Saturday of the fair at noon. That is a grandstand arena event, but it is free. It is free to all, and it is a fabulous show. The it's a horses, the horses are just they, they look amazing. Beautiful. Yes. 
Yeah. Sounds amazing. Sarah Spawn is the fair secretary, Leanna Landy, the entry office secretary. Thanks so much for joining us today about the Westmoreland Fair coming up August 19th through the 27th, 2022. I'm your host, Jennifer Mealy. Thanks for listening to Westmoreland Community Connections on WHJB. This has been Westmoreland Community Connections, a look at issues and happenings in and around Westmoreland County. Join us again next week on Classic Hits 107.1 WHJB. HJB, HJB, HJB.